Hi, everyone. This is Varun Chandik speaking. Thank you for joining on this crisp Canadian morning. I'm delighted for all of you to join us here today. Um, before we begin, I want to mention that I know that we have people joining from all over Canada and perhaps the world today. I personally am joining from Toronto, which is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Sagas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis. Let's continue to recognize and deeply appreciate the historic connection of Indigenous peoples to this place as we move forward in the spirit of reconciliation. Let us know in the chat, where are you joining from so that we can celebrate our beautiful country. Before we continue, a few quick housekeeping items. Please note that this event is being recorded Live captioning is available using Zoom. You should have an option available at the bottom of your Zoom screens to turn on live captioning. And since this is a virtual webinar, I would like to invite you all to please keep your mute on, but you're always welcome to participate in the chat. Send us your questions, your thoughts, your comments in the chat throughout this conversation. As a bit of a quick introduction, Access to Success is a Toronto-based not-for-profit that runs ATS Labs, which is Canada's first and only accelerator for accessibility startups. I founded the organization in this accelerator because I have a couple of disabilities myself. I'm hard of hearing, and I have what's called herbs palsy, which is a form of partial paralysis and my left arm. Being hard of hearing and relying very heavily on lip reading, I've always dreamt of a world that would have smart contact lenses smart contact lenses that would use artificial reality to give me live captions. That doesn't exist. But because that doesn't exist, I met a lot of other entrepreneurs working on a lot of other dreams for other people with disabilities. And those entrepreneurs told me that they needed help. During the pandemic, while it was a world where everybody was wearing masks, I couldn't lip read. And live captioning was a game changer, a lifesaver for me. So I realized that personal importance, that life-changing importance of tech for people with disabilities, and that is why ADS Labs exists as Canada's only accelerator for accessibility startups. That means that we provide programming, mentorship, network, resources, and community to startups that we work with around the year. It's a three month official program that is tailor made specifically to design, to specifically to help startups creating products and solutions for people with disabilities scale. Those startups that go through our program receive mentorship and resources and training from over 200 CEOs and leaders and founders of later stage successful accessibility startups from over 10 countries. All of these people come to us through our expansive global network of partners, investors, and disability-focused organizations that we work with all over the globe. Over the years, we have had 80 applications from 19 countries and five continents for our programming. As I mentioned, we've had over 200 mentors and speakers host over 120 masterclasses and workshops across four cohorts and four years. Ultimately, 45 something startups have gone through our program and across them, they estimate that they've raised over $13 million in dilutive and non-dilutive funding and raised over $3 million in revenues. But most importantly, they estimate that they've benefited over half a million people with disabilities today. Now, if this content seems familiar to some of you, that's because Many of you attended our 2023 Demo Day very recently on November 30th. I'm delighted to mention that was the culmination of our fourth very successful cohort. You're welcome to check out the recording that is now available. You folks are in fact the first people to receive access to this recording. You're welcome to scan the QR code on the screen or use the link that Sydney, my colleague, has just posted in the chat to check out the recording of our Demo Day. Before we continue with today's programming, I would also like to invite you to stay updated on our work at Access to Success in ATS Labs. We provide 
tailor-made programming for startups and organizations serving people with disabilities around the year. You can sign up for a beta and our newsletter by scanning the QR code on the screen or use any of the links that are available and that Sydney will drop in the chat shot. I'm gonna pause here to allow people to use the links. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome our newest collaborator for access to success in ADS Labs, CBC Radio Canada. The work that we do would not be possible without the support of, of our amazing sponsors, partners, and collaborators. And CBC Radio Canada is our newest one this year. Thank you to CBC Radio Canada for joining us and our efforts to enable everyone. With that, I would like to invite our speakers for today's webinar. Rachel DeJuri is CBC Radio Canada's National Accessibility Lead, driving the development and implementation of Canada's public broadcaster's first national accessibility plan. Rachel has experience leading strategic accessibility work across the media industry, higher education, and nonprofits. She combines her professional exper expertise, her educational background, and her lived experience as a disabled woman to drive her personal vision of building a more accessible and inclusive world. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Haroon. Our second speaker of the day is Anik Shampoo, who places sustainable, sustainability at the heart of a professional and personal life. She joined CBC Radio Canada in 2022 after more than 16 years of working with the Government of Canada in the area of sustainable procurement. As the Environmental, Social and Governance Procurement Program Advisor, ANIC helps the organization achieve its environmental goals by promoting environmentally sustainable products, services, and suppliers. ANIC, welcome, and over to both of you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I will share my screen. Perfect. All right. Welcome, everyone. And on behalf of CBC Radio Canada, I just want to say how excited Anik and I are to be with you today. It's really a pleasure and uh, to talk about some of the work that we're doing and, and help you uh, connect with us. Uh, that is one of the goals for today. So um, just to thank you, Ruth, for that introduction. Uh, a uh, few words about myself. I'm on the screen on the back. Uh, you'll see a couple of quilts on the wall. One of them looks a lot like the retro CBC Radio Canada logo. I am a blonde woman. I'm wearing red lipstick today. I am white. I'm not wearing my glasses today. And if you're listening to me, um, you'll hear a little bit of uh, voice differences because I am both hard of hearing and have a cleft lip and palate. Uh, and I will be kicking off our presentation today, but first I'll let my colleague Anik uh, just describe herself. Thank you, Rachel. So hi everyone, very happy to be with you today. My name is Anik Champou. And um, so just to describe myself, I'm also a white, a white woman with brown hair, a little curly, and I have a black shirt and black glasses. Really nice to be with you and uh, looking forward to the presentation. So if we go to the next slide and just uh, give you an outline of what you can expect, we'll uh, start off today by just introducing you to CBC Radio Canada's National Accessibility Plan, which gives some important context for the work that we're trying to do at CBC Radio Canada. And, um, and give you some insights on how you might, uh, your organization, businesses might uh, contribute to these goals. Then I'll hand it off to Anit Shampoo, who will talk about uh, our uh, sustainable procurement initiatives, and we'll leave time for questions at the end. So just uh, to get everyone on the same page in terms of vocabulary, when I say CBC Radio Canada, I am as we are speaking in English, just want to clarify, I'm not talking only about radio, I'm talking about CBC, which is our English services. And if you listen or watch us, 
you'll be most familiar with CBC, but Radio Canada is the name of our French services. Together, we uh, make part of the organization that is called CBC Radio Canada, which is uh, Canada's public broadcaster. And we're guided by the accessibility, uh, sorry, by the Broadcasting Act. And our mission is celebrating Canadian culture and supports democratic life through a wide range of content that informs, enlightens, and entertains. And if you think about content, we have television programming, we have streaming, we have uh, radio, we have podcasts, uh, we have digital content. You might uh, interact with us on our apps, you might interact with us on a whole host of different services and on the screen in front of you, it's just a couple of the different uh, bragging or, or logos that you might be familiar with. Jam, CBC Books, CBC.ca, CBC Radio One, Curio, Maj. Uh, so just all of this ecosystem together makes up the public broadcaster. If we go to the next slide, um, we have a corporate strategy and that is supported by three key uh, strategic uh, documents that help us give our best services to people living in Canada. And our equity, diversity and inclusion plan, our uh, greening our story, which is our sustainability and environmental plan and breaking barriers, which is our accessibility plan, uh, which is launched this year. And all of these are available on our corporate website if you're interested in learning more about that. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about our accessibility plan for a second. You know, uh, our vision as a public broadcaster is to become a public service media organization that is a world leader in accessibility that is really propelled by the contributions of people with disabilities. And we're focusing our, our efforts in three key areas. Uh, on the next slide, uh, we'll show we have offering an accessible and inclusive employee experience. We want to foster inclusive workplace culture by identifying, removing, and preventing barriers. We want to better reflect disability in our stories and storytelling. So we will distinguish ourselves through the representation and participation of people with disabilities in all aspects of our content creation. And lastly, championing accessibility in all that we do by driving accessibility, by designing and delivering accessible services and programs. And so I'm going to put that in other words. We want to think about our role as an employer, our role as a content creator, and how do we make that entire ecosystem through everything that we do, whether you interact with someone in our finance department, whether you're interacting with a journalist, whether you're interacting with um, uh, HR representative, how do we ensure that every player within CBC Radio Canada knows what they can do to make a more accessible broadcaster? And those objectives, you know, those are kind of three themes that uh, overlay our uh, overall objectives. And uh, again, if we think about the seven objectives that are guiding our plan over the three years, we want to improve the inclusion of employees with disabilities, while we want to increase the recruitment, retention, and promotion of people with disabilities in our workforce. We want to create and promote content that reflects the diversity of people with disabilities living in Canada, increase opportunities for creators with disabilities in the media industry, increase the accessibility of our content, especially with a focus on digital platforms, improve the accessibility of our technology and infrastructure, and develop accessibility knowledge and ability amongst employees. And I hope that as you're listening, you're already making links between uh, the organizations that you represent and that the products or services you provide and some of these overall objectives. Uh, and, and this is um, one of the motivating factors uh, for CBC Radio Canada to be sponsoring the 
to, to discuss demo day and to be hosting this. Uh, we want to work not only with creators from a media sense, but folks like you who uh, have services and products um, uh, as focused on accessibility or that you yourself are uh, vendors that are disability led. So I'm going to pass that on to my colleague, Anik, who will tell you more about procurement at CBC Radio Canada. Thank you very much, Rachel. And it's always very inspiring to see all the actions that are yeah, happening at CBC Radio Canada. And uh, I'm going to talk about sustainable procurement. It's probably a new concept for you. So I'm going to start by defining. So sustainable procurement is really um, the action to include social and environmental considerations when we do procurement. And we're talking about social pillar. It's really about reducing the barriers for vendors from underrepresented groups, but also to promote vendors that have equity, diversity, and inclusion practices. And also, when we're talking about re reducing barriers, we want to reduce barriers when we procure goods and services. We want to make sure it's accessible um, for our employees, just like Rachel said, but also for uh, our audience. So that's for uh, the social pillar. Now for the environmental pillar, we really want to promote environmental products and services. Um, you know, we want to select products that really help reduce our environmental impact. And we want to promote vendors that already have actions and policies on sustainability. So in a nutshell, this is really what sustainable procurement is about. And you will see how you can play a role uh, into that. Just, uh, I've talked about vendors from underrepresented group. I just want to define it. So it's the same five um, uh, underrepresented group than our national plan on equity, diversity, and inclusion. So we're talking about women, LGBTQ2 plus community, indigenous people, veteran and people with disabilities, and racialized people. And um, so vendors that are 51% over owned, managed, and operated by one of these communities are uh, identified as a vendor from an underrepresented group. So you can see why it's pertinent today for us to present because we want to reach out to uh, these vendors and, and you uh, as a vendor, um, and we really want to promote these communities. So let's continue. I'm going to talk a little bit about our procurement process. How do we make business and how do we interact with vendors at CBC Radio Canada? First, uh, we are a crown corporation, so we have to abide by the rules of public procurement. And we have very strong values. We want to make sure we, with integrity, transparency, and be equitable for all our vendors. Um, so that's very important. We're also subject to Canadian free trade agreement and we also have to respect uh, the rules that is included in that agreement. Um, the way we solicit bids and that's very interesting and you'll see the linkages um, in the in the future is that we have two ways to um, to invite vendors or to uh, solicit bids. So the first one is really by invitation. Usually it's for um, for when we have procurement of the value less than $500,000. What we do is that we send uh, an invitation directly to vendors. And uh, you will see later on how by subscribing to our new portal, you can access some of these opportunities if there's a match with, with uh, the product or services that you're organization offers. So that's the first way of um, have, you know, doing business with us. The second way is really publicly. Um, when the contract is foreseen to be $500,000 and more, we have to publish and make it public. So it's open to everyone. It's on Mercs. Mercs is um, a software. Uh, it's it's on the web and you have to subscribe to uh, see the opportunity on Mercs. There's a slight cost, but you can see opportunities from CBC Radio Canada and a lot of other organizations. So just wanted to let you know, these are the two ways uh, we are soliciting bids. So let's continue. Maybe you're asking yourself, well, 
what is CBC Radio Canada buying the most? Like, where is the uh, where is most um, procurement opportunities? So first, of course, we are an organization across Canada. We have a lot of building operation and and also a lot of transmission sites. You know, all the antennas, and so that's why the 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 most um, spend goes to the facilities. And the second one, you know, we are on television, on radio, and on digital. So with no no surprise, information technology is one category. We buy a lot of hardware, software, support. We also buy a lot of media equipment, digital platform, cloud services, transmission equipment, as I said, with our antennas, and a lot of media services as well. Finally, we more common, we have a lot of professional services requirements, so marketing services and sometimes, you know, training and other professional services. And finally, general goods and services, just like other organizations, we need furniture, we need recycled paper and things like that. So uh, out of curiosity, this is the five top categories of spend. I hope I'm doing good with the time. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, I see Rachel saying yes. Um, on the screen, you see the image of the accessibility plan. So I'm just making the linkages with what Rachel said before. So what's uh, for procurement, what is um, the goal to uh, and, and what is included in the plan? So first, we have the launch of our supplier portal, and I will show you because it's launched, so that, that's good. The vendor code of conduct is also uh, ready and, and launched. And finally, I'll talk a little bit more about integrating accessibility in ICT procurement. That's where we still have more work to do. So that was a little summary. Now I'm going to try to uh, let you watch a video. I'm going to, sorry, I'm not used to Teams. So let me, I don't want, I think I will have to stop sharing. Let me see. Give me two seconds. No, okay. So, yes. Okay. P can, can you put the thumbs up if you see the YouTube video? Yeah, okay. And now the test is to make sure you hear the sound. Okay, so... Just to let you know, this is a video that really explains our initiative on sustainable procurement. So hopefully you hear as well. CBC Radio Canada's supply chain management team is proud to take action to incorporate sustainability, equity, diversity, and inclusion into its business practices. Two new tools have been created to make this happen, the Vendor Code of Conduct and the Directive on Sustainable Procurement. The Vendor Code of Conduct sets out the principles and expectations that vendors must meet when doing business with CBC Radio Canada. The Directive on Sustainable Procurement has two goals, to promote goods services and vendors that are environmentally sustainable, allowing us to reduce the environmental impact or climate risks of our operations, and to include vendors owned by members of underrepresented groups. So how will we achieve this? By embedding social and environmental strategies into the procurement process, this includes promoting products and services with a lower carbon footprint, promoting certified sustainable products and services, working with vendors who, like us, have established policies, programs, or practices that protect the environment and diversify the supply chain, reducing barriers to the participation of vendors from underrepresented groups in the corporation's procurement processes. There are many benefits to the Sustainable Procurement Initiative. It helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, water consumption, material use, and waste generation. This supports the objectives of our environmental sustainability strategy, greening our story, it also creates a more sustainable, circular, and inclusive supply chain. 
To be successful, we need to maximize engagement with our vendors throughout the supply chain. We have therefore developed a new portal for vendors interested in doing business with us to register. The portal allows vendors owned by members of underrepresented groups to self-identify. Environmentally sustainable vendors can also share information about their sustainable goods, services, and practices. We invite you to register to be added to our database and access more opportunities. As the National Public Broadcaster, we take our social and environmental responsibilities seriously. Join us in our commitment and together let's create a supply chain that's more environmentally sustainable, equitable, inclusive and diverse. Okay, I need to get out of this. Let me go back. Perfect. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I like to say that a 20 minute presentation is better uh, summarized in three minute video. So video is very effective. So we talked about the supplier portal. It's ready. It's launched. It's completed. So I want to show you um, how, you know, how to subscribe. Um, no, I came back to the PowerPoint. I have to go back again. So, okay, wait. This is, I'm having some challenge with the, the top of my screen. Let me just, okay, here. Can you see it correctly still? Yes? Okay. So my screen is smaller, but I think it's okay when you see it. So this is our new portal. So we really revamped our website to ex better explain how to do business with us and also to simplify it and make it a little uh, easier. So you have all, you know, how to be a supplier, what you need to know. We have a procurement policy. If you're interested, you can look at it. But what's even more interesting is really how to register. So I want to show you the profile information form and hopefully it will be readable because it's not too small and I'm going to try I think it's okay so the the supplier information in the new portal is really a normal form that you can fill out but I want to raise attention on a couple points so here you know normal information your business name and all that what I want to raise your attention is really about the category you know, we're looking to do business with suppliers from underrepresented groups. And what's very important is that the category that these vendors put really matches our need. So when people sometimes subscribe to our portal, and you can see here the category, we have a lot of categories. So I suggest that you take the time to look at these categories and really select the, the ones that are pertinent. Um, you need to make sure you select the one where you could have a bid or like answer a competitive bid. Why? Because some suppliers put a lot of categories and when we reach out to them, they say, oh, no, we're not in that service or not in that category. So make sure you select the ones that are very pertinent, but don't put too much. Otherwise, you will always say, oh, no, that's not on my line of business and this will uh, not be effective. So that was one of my um, suggestion. And then we ask question like, are you? you a, a CBC Radio Canada supplier and this is the most important question and uh, this is where as said in the video you can self-identify and say if you're a person from one or more of these following groups and we see here that we have person with disabilities um, if you're part of a supplier certification from a rec recognized council you can also say it here and you can say the date of the certification. So if you are certified, we can also, um, you know, find you. And the rest, it's really about ESG reporting, ESG stands <laughs> for environment, social and governance. And uh, if you offer, you know, green products and services. So that's what I wanted to show you. The portal is ready. And please, uh, we will give you the link in an email after the presentation. And please subscribe. We really are looking for opportunities and uh, organization like yours. And when you're ready, you just click on submit and we have a list. 
So I will go back to the PowerPoint. Go back to the diaporama. Okay, so here I just want to I touched on it. It's really the most important question to identify that you are an organization um, from an underrepresented group to increase. And really the goal is to have more opportunities for your organization. Now I want to touch base on another tool that we talked in the video, and that is the Vendor Code of Conduct. The Vendor Code of Conduct is really there to set a baseline to make sure that vendors respect human rights, ethic, the environment, and we also uh, encourage them to have sustainable and inclusive policies and practices. And we're really happy to share that we have a, sec a section on accessibility in our vendor code of conduct. On this um, PowerPoint slide, you can see the image of the launch of the accessibility plan, uh, a very nice picture. And in the vendor code of conduct, vendors are really encouraged to promote accessibility within their workplace, but also to incorporate universal design principles. So that's what we have included in our vendor code of conduct. Now, just I want to touch a little bit on what's upcoming. Uh, we really want to include accessibility in our, our procurement, in our procurement process, in our risk management tool. We need to really define the procurement action that will be happening for the, re the next uh, year. Uh, probably we will need a directive. Why? Because directive makes things mandatory. We've just launched a directive on sustainable procurement. I will touch on it after. But the goal of the directive is to make it mandatory because in procurement, if it's not mandatory, it's not happening. So that's really the goal. And also we want to create a toolbox because when you want to change something, you need tools. It needs to be easy because procurement is not easy, but it can be as easy as possible when you have the right tools. So that's really what's upcoming in the procurement process. Now, I just want to touch a little bit on the Directive on Sustainable Procurement. I already said that it's, it makes it mandatory, but it really explains when and how to include environmental sustainability and supplier diversity in our supply chain, in our procurement. So um, for environmental sustainability, we well, for both, we went with a strategic approach to maximize impact. So for environmental sustainability, we selected 14 uh, impactful categories where it's mandator, mandatory to include considerations and criteria on environmental sustainability. Now for supplier diversity, um, if you recall when I talked about the two ways of soliciting bids, it's now mandatory to invite a supplier from an underrepresented group when we are by invitation. And that's why you need to subscribe to the portal because the first thing we do is that we go in our list and we try to find a match between our procurement and the vendors from a underrepresented group that are in our portal or in our uh, supplier councils list. So we need more people and more organization so we can have a match in every procurement. Uh, also, uh, when we have uh, procurement on Mercs, the public way of doing business, we send this link to our supplier councils that were members to inform the supplier diversity groups that we have an opportunity. So this is how, with the Directive on Sustainable Procurement, we really want to make an impact environmentally and uh, socially. And after the other things you see on the screen, it's really, you know, procurement is all about collaboration. We collaborate with our business units. Um, so it's it's all a matter of discussion and needs and what do how do we include environmental and social criteria. Um, then we also, in our uh, directive, we reserve some points on social and environmental uh, uh, considerations. And finally, we evaluate and we issue contract. So I think, yeah, that's it for me. I just want to say that, you know, as a public broadcaster, we really uh, are trying. We know there's more work to do to be fully accessible and fully sustainable, but we, we are really dedicated to make a difference and be more accessible and sustainable and inclusive. Thank you. So I think I will stop sharing. 
I hope that Thank you, Anna and Rachel, for an amazing presentation. This is very enjoying the Chrome Access to Success speaking. I have a bunch of questions in the chat already. So, folks, we have plenty of time left for questions. Please send them in the chat, and it would be my pleasure to serve as the moderator. In the order that questions came in, the first one is, does CBC Radio Canada work with startups, especially those with an ESG, or let me add, an impact focus? Good question. I think I will take this one. Um, so we don't differentiate if it's startups or, you know, we don't have special program. However, we do have um, the, we have some criteria that um, helps organizations that do have ESG, um, as I said, policies and practices. So we have points reserved for this in our procurement process. So that's how that you're, if you're a startup or if you're an organization, if you have ESG, you will be promoted and, and have some points on that for sure. Thank you. Um, and I know you mentioned supply councils towards the end, but just towards the raised question, will member membership with IWSCC, Inclusive Workplace and Supply Council of Canada, the certifying body for disabled owned and veteran owned businesses, be a part of your plan moving forward? I can start to answer and then I will leave it to Rachel. So we're members of three organizations, three supplier councils, uh, CCAB that certifies indigenous businesses, uh, WeB Canada that certifies women in business, and CC, uh, no, I said it, and CAMC uh, that certified racialized um, community and businesses. Um, so these are the three right now, but it's we're not member of uh, the one that certifies disability. That's why you need to subscribe to the portal. But I'll let Rachel answer if that's a plan for the future. Thank you. That's exciting. I'm, I, I must say I'm delighted and excited to learn of CBC Radio Canada's active interest in supporting disability-owned and veteran-owned businesses. Um, Maybe, Varun, can I just compliment uh, and um, oh, tickle in my throat? Um, I will just say it's not off the table. Today is one of the um, first very intentional uh, moments when we're actively engaging the disability vendor and supplier community through uh, kind of direct contact because we know that uh, there can be barriers in terms of knowing how to do business with a large public organization. We know there can be bar barriers to uh, getting access to us directly. And so uh, this is kind of our approach for right now, but we're exploring all opportunities as we uh, continue on with this as a priority. Thank you. Um, okay, the next question from Emma is, um, apologies if you covered this already, but as an accessibility tech startup, we are selling a service business often, service that businesses often don't know they need yet. How would we engage with CBT if our service is not actively being procured? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, so of course, we're always looking Looking for new opportunities and and to open you know our supply chain, but of course we need to know if we have this request. Sometimes there's some amazing companies and startups, but for example, I had one meeting me for um, a Farian flower, so flower, but that's not something we buy. So we need to have a match. And I will say the best way really to engage with us right now is to choose the right category in our portal and to really make sure that you subscribe because we do take that list every single day and try to have match with our needs. So for, for now, it's this. We, we also, you know, with these... We, we like to know the suppliers um, in these um, events, but really the best way is the portal for now. Thank you. Uh, Devin asks, 
what's the department spending threshold to utilize services or products of suppliers for one off requests without needing to have a formal contract or a low dollar contract? Yeah, this question. So, um, so that I guess the question is, when do we go competitive? Uh, usually, and I'll say in general, because because there's a lot of exceptions, but really usually it's when it's less than 50,000, that's when we can uh, go direct. However, even then, even though we can go direct span and, and have only one supplier, it's a good practice to try to have multiple bids just to make sure we have uh, the best value. Um, so that's one part of the answer. Um, also with financial constraint, it's always the it's always best, even for some, you know, I bought some rechargeable batteries lately, and even though it was not that expensive, we went to a lot of suppliers to make sure we had the best price uh, on rechargeable batteries. So it is 50000 and less, but we are, even in that threshold, uh, sometimes looking for multiple bits. Thank you. And at the risk of your inbox getting bombarded, will you be sharing your emails? Um, I can share, I will share my generic email that is uh, ESG email. So, and I will try to answer, but as you can see, sometimes when there's a lot of people and when we do a lot of these presentations, sometimes it's difficult to answer each and every one of those. So I will give the generic address that is ESG uh, procurement. I, I will give it to you in the email later, but I will not put my personal address so that my because otherwise <laughs> my email address get a little crazy but yeah we will share one that we can engage understandably so um is there a specific category in the portal for companies specific to accessibility so we didn't identify a category for accessibility however we identify vendors that are from underrepresented groups that are uh uh, in a situation of disability. So that's the angle we have. It's really more on the membership and the company than, uh, but that's a good idea. If you have some suggestions, we can play with these categories. So these are the kind of suggestion if you wanna write to the email and say, hey, I didn't see this category or this accessibility category or a way of improving our category. We're not close to these uh, suggestions. We're open to that for sure. And maybe I'll yes. just add, I think that um, for companies that provide a specific service, I saw in the drop down menu, it's still a digital service. So you can find, you know, the closest one uh, that relates to your work. And uh, I just, as an example, um, when I support some of our teams who are going to market for very specific um accessibility solutions we are going into the portal and kind of scanning who is in there and what kind of services you offer even if it's there's no specific category for like document remediation for example uh i think a digital service is the best place to to put yourself thank you um in the area of expanding stories to all band represented groups, is there an opportunity to pitch stories or guest posts? I'll take that one. Uh, so that, uh, it, that falls outside of what we're talking about in procurement. However, our editorial team, if you are uh, interested in English, uh, you can check out CBC's first person or opinion pieces. I'll try and uh, find some links to you which have their their pitching um, instructions directly on the website if you have a story that you'd like to care, uh, tell and it tells you uh, the, what they're looking for and how to work with their team for that. Wonderful. Does CBC's RFP, a request for proposals, emphasize is the emphasis on lowest cost bid or a best value point system? Oh, I like this question. Um, so the method of evaluation differs from one bid to another. It really depends on, on 
the product and category. However, as I said, in the Directive on Sustainable Procurement, it's mandatory to reserve for for the categories that we selected, the 14 high impact categories, and when it's applicable, there's 5% points reserved on social and environmental criteria. So I would say that we're trying to get, go away from a low cost um, bid. And I would say that most of our bids are really more, you know, on the technical side of things. Of course, cost is always a factor. There's no, you know, that's, uh, that's for sure. However, um, yeah, we we have a way now to reserve points for sustainability, which is really good, and that's what the directive does. Thank you. Any more questions from the participants? I'll give you all a moment. Maybe mm -hmm. one uh, piece of information, Varun, that I'll share is if people are looking for uh, this information, uh, we'll be able to circulate some links to you, Varun, to share out with um, the participants. But in the meantime, uh, this might be a little bit counterintuitive, especially if you're used to engaging with us as a news or a content organization. The website that you're going to want to go to is actually CBC dot radio dash canada dot ca and that is our corporate website and on there uh, is where you'll have the information around working with us the supply uh supplier portal um that's where you'll find a lot of our corporate strategies and some more information about how who we are and how we do business uh that's on that site so um Thank you, and it for putting the link uh, in. So I put the link, Rachel, of the portal. So if you want, maybe under to put the link to CBC Radio Canada as a whole. But I just wanted to make sure if people want to subscribe, that they can do so right now. So you can subscribe, and also there's a if you want to do it in French, you can also do it in French. So both languages are there. And if you want to circulate the video or watch the video again or read the vendor code of conduct, all that is on this page. So the information is ready for you. Let me just add that uh, within a few days following today's webinar, we will, we will be sending out an email to all attendees, all registrants, with a link to a recording of this webinar and all of the relevant links that I'm sure Rachel and Anik will share with us. So don't worry, you do not have to take extensive notes at the moment. A couple more questions. Is there an innovation unit that someone could perhaps talk to? Good question. In procurement, we don't have that function. Rachel, uh, I think you maybe you touched on it. Innovation unit, maybe on more on accessibility. I would say the um, best way to get in contact with us if you do want to follow up following this call. Right now, just innovation. No, but there are different teams that take on different projects, whether we're talking about our technical uh innovations or digital products so uh more information about what you do would probably be helpful and so if you want to pass that along to the esg uh email and then uh that would be uh helpful for us to direct you to the right place uh i would say as a general rule we do get a lot of contacts around like unsolicited pitches but i do read my emails and I am available on LinkedIn if you want to send something your, uh, my way. I'm not the key holder to all of uh, our procurement practices, but if you do have a product related to accessibility and want me to know about it, uh, connecting with me on LinkedIn is the best way to get uh, that in my direction. But in, in terms of the best way to connect with Everyone who's looking to purchase or do something at CBC Leisure Canada really is through the uh, supplier portal that Anik outlined. Thank you. Um, wonderful general knowledge based question. Where is CBC Radio Canada's headquarters uh, uh, located? Which province? Uh, 
Our head office is located in Ottawa, Ontario, and then there's two uh, major stations in both Toronto Broadcast Centre and in Montreal, uh, Maison Radio Canada, based in, in Quebec. Uh, but I, I think our uh, main headquarters uh, official address is in Ottawa. That's that's good to know for me as well. Um, I will edit Sonia's question a little bit. Do vendors need to be Canadian corporations or otherwise Canadian residents or somehow located in Canada? No, we do business with international uh, organizations. So we, we don't uh, restrict it uh, to Canadian uh, companies. Thank you. And seeing no more questions in the chat, the last question that I would like to ask you is, besides everything that we've talked about today, is there any advice that you would like to share, Anik and Rachel, with potential vendors interested in working with CDC Radio Canada? Maybe I can talk about the procurement process. Don't be afraid. Don't tell yourself you're too small to bid to an opportunity. Um, you know, procurement seems long and complex, but it's really... You need to read carefully and answer very, um, how do we say, meticulously. You know, bring attention to details and read and make sure you answer the mandatories, the point rated criteria, but really don't be afraid. Look out on Mercs um, and subscribe to the portal. And if you're invited and you can deliver this service, don't be afraid and, and please present bits because we're looking for you. I think my advice is don't get discouraged if the first answer is no or not yet. Uh, we're in our own journey in terms of making things more accessible. And, and sometimes I've engaged with folks who uh, at a time of discussion, we were just not ready uh, for what you're offering. And that might change uh, as things goes along. So uh, take, all the opportunities and and um, and engage with us in all the channels that we've talked about today. That is so wonderfully encouraging. Eric and Rachel, thank you so much for this invaluably informative webinar. I think we all learned a lot today. We appreciate all of the efforts that CBC Radio Canada is undertaking for sustainable procurement and for accessibility and disability inclusion. Folks, if you would like to stay updated on our efforts at Access to Success and ATS Labs, here is a quick reminder. You're welcome to sign up for our newsletter. We do programming such as this all the time. And we have, of course, naturally have the ATS Labs Accelerator as well. Links are also available in the chat. And we will also share all of this afterwards in our email with today's webinar recording. Thank you so much for joining us today and enjoy the rest of the day.